My name is Dr. Martha Stark, and I am a psychoanalyst and holistic psychiatrist at the Harvard Medical School. And I gave a talk yesterday entitled, The Sandpile Model, colon, Optimal Stress, Complexity, and Hormesis. And I actually wanted to start by sharing first a little poem that I wrote in honor of my talk. And it goes as follows, and I actually dedicate this to Dr. Ed Calabrese. It's entitled, Optimal Stress and Hormesis. Excess stress will cause mental and physical distress. And as time passes, dyshomeostasis and chronic illness. But my hypothesis is that less stress, if well enough processed, will provide the impetus for healing and wellness and a strengthening at the break, broken places because of hormesis. <laughs> so that actually is what my talk uh, is about, and now I should be a little more specific. So I start with the sand pile model, here represented as an hourglass. Um, the sand pile model has long been intriguing to chaos theorists. Um, it is well known in many scientific circles. Um, is its evolution is governed by some complex mathematical formulas, but it has rarely been used to uh, applied to living systems and has never been used to describe the paradoxical impact of stress on the living system. So notice, if you will, about this amazing sand pile model. It's a complex, adaptive, nonlinear, dynamical, self-organizing, chaotic, open system. So we have the environmental stressors, the grains of sand, and so that's the environment, and then we have the underlying system, the gradually evolving sand pile. Now notice the thing about the sand pile, it's absolutely astounding. The grains of sand being slowly and gradually added to the ever-expanding sand pile are the occasion for both disruption and repair. So not only do the grains of sand being added precipitate partial collapse, but they also are the means by which the sand pile is able to build itself back up. So interestingly, the stressful input, the environmental stressors, the perturbations coming into this open system, are um, enable the system, the, the, the system then will evolve not just in spite of the stressful input, input, but by way of it. So it's not just the managing of the impact, but the benefiting from it. So what, I would, what follows from that is that stressful input is inherently neither bad poison nor good medication, but rather, as Paracelsus said, the difference between a poison and a medication is the dosage thereof. And I would add the capacity of the underlying system, the gradually evolving sand pile, to process and integrate the impact of the stressful input. And ultimately, after an initial disruption, to reconstitute adaptively at a higher level of integration, balance, and harmony. So I take the sand pile model, a complex, adaptive, open, chaotic system, and I apply this sand pile, mo this sand pile model to the evolution of the living system. I call it the mind-body matrix to highlight the complex interdependence of mind and body. So we have then the mind-body matrix, the living system, continuously refashioning itself by way of ongoing cycles of disruption, partial collapse, minor avalanche, as described in chaos theory, and then that's a defensive collapse when it's too much for the system to process and integrate. And then and if there's enough underlying capacity within the system to process and integrate, then an adaptive reconstituting at ever higher levels of complexity, 
organization and balance. So we get from point A to point B, if we have illness to wellness, by way of these ongoing iterative recursive cycles of disruption repair, disruption repair. In essence, a biphasic dose response. And finally, I wanted to say, we talk about whether the primary target is mind or body. And the clinical manifestation, therefore, either psychiatric or medical. We talk about psychiatric and medical disorders. We talk about psychiatric and medical diseases. And I'd like to suggest that we think of disorder as speaking literally to disrupted orderedness within the mind-body matrix, and therefore disrupted ease of flow, dis-ease of flow of regulatory information and vibratory energy throughout the expanse of the system. So that ultimately what makes the difference between a poison and a medication is the ability of the mind-body matrix to process, integrate, and adapt to the cumulative impact of the environmental stressors to which we all, over time, are being continuously exposed. So stressful stuff happens all the time to all of us. But again, it's how well we're able to process and integrate it that will make the difference between a growth-disrupting, sandpile-disorganizing, destabilizing event and a growth promoting or sand pile restabilizing, sand pile reorganizing opportunity. There you have it. Thank you.